Greetings, saints. And grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Billy D. Welcome to today's Moments in Ministry. Not long ago, police in Zambia recovered stolen money that had been buried in a man's farm. The value of the American dollars was about $450 million. How could a man living in one of the poorer regions of the world gain access to that much cash? The answer is simple. He worked for the government as a labor minister. During a search of the man's farm, authorities located two trunks crammed full of money. They had been buried and covered over with a layer of concrete. Naturally, the man was arrested and sentenced to prison. In one way or another, people have been trying to bury their sins for a long time. Cain tried to cover up the murder of his brother by feigning ignorance. But God already knew every detail of the crime. Moses buried in the sand the Egyptian he had murdered, but he couldn't hide the truth of what he had done and soon had to flee for his life. King David had Uriah killed in order to cover up his illicit relationship with the faithful soldier's wife, but he couldn't hide anything from God or his prophet. These men all paid a high price for trying to cover their sins. Moses said in Numbers 32 and 23, your sin will find you out. So why do people think they can hide anything from the one who is all seeing? In Romans 8, 27 and 1 John 3 and 20, it reads, he who searches the hearts he who knows all things. That might be a hard question to answer, but one thing is for certain. Trying to hide wrongdoing instead of confessing it and turning away only makes matters worse, especially in the offender's heart. David prescribes this grueling situation in the 32nd Psalm. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all day long. And for day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. It sounds like refusing to repent cost him some miserable days and sleepless nights. But once confronted with his sins, David made the right choice. He says further on in that psalm, verse 5, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. The same forgiveness that brought such great relief to King David is available to anyone. God's word assures us that any person who confesses and forsakes sin will have mercy. Here's a slice of today's bread of heaven from Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh shall have mercy. Let us pray. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So until we come this way again, may God bless you and keep you is my prayer.